Peter was born in the northern Italian town of Imola, around the late 300s, and ordained a deacon by the Bishop Cornelius there. Peter was named the Bishop of Ravenna, then capital of the Western Roman Empire, by Pope Sixtus III, in 433. Known for his short doctrinal homilies, Peter became known as Chrysologus, or Golden Worded. Peter said, Jesus is the bread sown in the Virgin, leavened in the flesh, molded in his passion, baked in the furnace of the sepulchre, placed in the churches, and set upon the altars, which daily supplies heavenly food for the faithful. Peter also defended the authority of the Pope and the dual nature of Christ, against the heretic, Eutyches. Peter died about 450, and was named the Doctor of Homilies by Pope Benedict XIII in 1729. Why then man, are you so worthless in your own eyes, and yet so precious to God? Why render yourself such dishonor, when you are honored by him? Why do you ask, how you were created? And do not seek to know, why you were made? Was not this entire visible universe, made for your dwelling? He has made you in his image, that you might, in your person, make the invisible creator present on earth. He has made you his legate, so that the vast empire of the world, might have the Lord's representative. Then, in his mercy, God assumed what he made in you. He wanted now, to be truly manifest in man, just as he had wished to be revealed in man, as in an image. Now he would be in reality, what he had submitted to be in symbol. Sermon 148 The Apostle says, I appeal to you, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Brethren, this sacrifice follows the pattern of Christ's sacrifice, by which he gave his body as a living immolation, for the life of the world. He really made his body, a living sacrifice, because, though slain, he continues to live. In such a victim, death receives its ransom, but the victim remains alive. Death itself, suffers the punishment. This is why death for the martyrs, is actually a birth, and their end, a beginning. Their execution is the door to life, and those who were thought to have been blotted out from the earth, shine brilliantly in heaven. Sermon 108 God called Abraham, out of the heathen world, symbolically lengthened his name, and made him the father of all believers. God walked with him on his journeys, protected him in foreign lands, enriched him with earthly possessions, and honored him with victories. God made a covenant with him, saved him from harm, accepted his hospitality, and astonished him by giving him the offspring he had despaired of. Favored with so many graces, and drawn by such great sweetness of divine love, Abraham was to learn to love God rather than fear him, and love rather than fear was to inspire his worship. Sermon 147 Whether it is Christ's human generation, or whether it is his divine one, both generations are indescribable. So what surge of water, O oh man, what tidal wave, has brought you to such a shipwreck? What wind has propelled you to fly through the air to your ruin? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one deity, one power, one eternity, one majesty. But whatever inferiority the Son has, whatever he receives, whatever he does not know, comes from my body, not from his substance. Or are you surprised, O oh man, that he invokes his Father in heaven, while deeming it fitting, to have a mother on earth? Sermon 62.8 I have a baptism to receive. Christ is baptized in his own blood, so that whatever he assumed from our flesh, he would wash clean, renew, and restore completely, into the form of his divine majesty. Christ is baptized with the baptism of his passion, since the sin of the whole world could not be destroyed, except by him who had made the world. Sermon 164.6 There are three things my brethren, by which faith stands firm, devotion remains constant, and virtue endures. They are prayer, fasting, and mercy. Prayer knocks at the door, fasting obtains, mercy receives. 
prayer, mercy, and fasting. These three are one, and they give life to each other. Fasting is the soul of prayer, mercy is the lifeblood of fasting. Let no one try to separate them, they cannot be separated. If you have only one of them, or not all together, you have nothing. So if you pray, fast, if you fast, show mercy. If you want your petition to be heard, hear the petition of others. If you do not close your ear to others, you open God's ear to yourself. Sermon 43